Welcome to Pixel Composer 1.17 Major Update. So in this video, I will only go through the main big feature and the new node introduced since the last 1.16 update. So that's I think about four months ago. It's been a while and I'm not going to go too deep into the detail because if you check in the link in the description, there is a list of new feature added since the last stable update and there's a bunch of them. So let's get to it. One of the biggest features in this version is the introduction of the new fluid simulation system. So in the past, we only have the basic fluid simulation. Now that system is uh, being renamed into a smoke simulation. And this new fluid simulation is now called the flip fluid. If you click on the generation and then go to the simulation, you're going to see this flip fluid and you're going to see the smoke sim. This is the old fluid simulation and this is the new one. Now flip fluid simulation is fundamentally different from the previous smoke sim because it simulates the free surface. So you can think of it as like a side view where instead of the smoke simulation, it will simulate the mixture of a fluid in another fluid. Or in the flip fluid, it will, as you can see here, it's going to look like a side view simulation. One thing that you will notice immediately is now a lot of this simulation and some of the node or array manipulation are now changed into an inline group system. So in the past, when you have a simulation like the VFX simulation here, it will be a group so that you have to double click to see the content inside. But in this newer version, it's now in an inline system. So it will not be a group. Instead, it will be these dynamic frames. Well, if you want to add content related to that group, so you have to right click inside this frame area and you'll be able to access the VFX related node here. And on the topic of groups, one thing that I want to mention is I also change how you enter the content of the groups. So when you create groups, instead of simply double clicking to see the content inside, you now have to hold shift key, then double click and I change it because normally you use double click to send node to the preview, right? Now when you double click on this group, it will also send the content inside to the preview if there are any. So if you want to see the content inside, you now have to hold shift. However, if you don't like this, you can also disable this in the preference as well. In that way, you can double click to see the content inside and you have to go right click and then click send to preview to send the preview content to the preview panels. The next thing is the improvement on the canvas node. Now, this is actually planned to be introduced in the next 1.18 version, but I have quite a bit of free time during the end of the 1.17 development, so I decided to put it in now. First is that the selection, and I'll act like a proper selection, so that when you select an area, you can it will also act as a mask. So when you modify the content inside, it will only apply that modification to the selection area. We have also the new freeform shapes. We also have a curve too, which allows you to draw a base curve. You can also do shift and then right click to adjust the brush size, even inside the curve view. I also improve the brush shape to be more pixel accurate. And when you hold shift by default, it will also display the slope consistency guide to make it easier for you to draw a pixel perfect line. You can also disable this in the setting tab here and then you can disable the slope check. We also have the new set of tool which allow you to manipulate your image easier. For example, we have the outline tool that you can just click and drag on the area that you want to add outline outside or inside the image. We have the extrude tool which will extrude out the area and we have the inset which does similar thing to extrude but you inset the area inside. And one last thing is the ability to load in a single built-in pixel composer node to your canvas and then modify your image destructively. So you can select an area in your canvas and then you can go to the apply node here. It will just bring up your normal add node dialog. Here you can just add in the node that you want. Like for example, if you want to apply the blur effect, you can click on the blur. Now you'll be able to adjust the blur property just like you did with the actual node. And then you can click once on this canvas area to apply it. Or you can also hold shift by clicking it to just replace the entire content. So you can apply effect directly on it. There are also a lot more updates in different tools that we have and the brush setting and everything else. And I think this change should make the canvas node even more useful in the destructive drawing. Next, we have keyframe driver. So this can be accessed in the animation panels. You can select on the keyframe, right click, and now you will see the driver option here. And the keyframe driver allows you to apply a modification on the values of a keyframe. For example, you can add in a linear manipulation to the values, so you can have the value increase over time using only one single keyframe. You can also add in the wiggle to randomize the value per frames, or you can apply a flat sine wave onto it. 
Now you can only choose one driver per keyframe, so you cannot stack an effect on top of each other. If you want to do that, I would recommend you to just go to the expression and then create your expression for a more complex animation. Then you might already notice this, but I have again changed the widget interface to be more simplified and to take less space than before, especially with the stuff like the rotator, the area box, and the padding and all this stuff used to take a lot of space. Right now it's a lot more compact and it's also even more compact in the compact view as well. And on the topic of user interface, there is also the new parameter view in the graph panel. By pressing M on a selecting node, you will turn it into the parameter view. And this view allows you to adjust the value of that parameter right in the graph area. And you can see here, you can change the rotation, you can change the colors, you can change all these properties, just like how you can modify it in the inspector right in this graph. Now you have to enable the parameter view per node. And you can do it by pressing M to toggle it. Or you can also right click and then say toggle node parameter. And the next big feature is a command line interface. And this will allow you to apply the Pixel Composer project on the setup image without having to open Pixel Composer software itself by using the command line. If you want more guide into how to use this, I will point you to the Pixel Composer documentation that I'm writing at the moment because there's a lot of typing in there. So I think it would be better to put it in text form. Apart from that, we also have a set of new nodes. I'm not gonna cover every single one of them and you can access it by the new section in your add node. Dialog. As you can see, there are, are new nodes that relate to the new flip fluid simulation system. There is a new input and output node, including the raw byte, which allow you to read file of any type as a byte buffer, which may or may not be useful for some situation. We also have the spout sender, which allow you to interact with other software using a spout libraries. There's also an ability to read a MIDI input. If you have like a MIDI device that you want to use to control your graph, you can also use the MIDI in node as well. We have some transformation node and we have a bunch of new filter like the different type of blur we have a different type of distortion and some basic image manipulation like the witness effect we have some 3d node and a bunch of new generate node including the new mk effect as well we have the new image grid compose node and some of the value adjustment and some of the new animation and miscellaneous stuff related to the comma line interface another new interesting feature that introduced in this version is the mappable parameter so in some of the value, you will see that there are this new icon at the end there. And this means that this value is a mappable parameter. And that means that you can control the value of this parameter using another surface. So we can just click on toggle map. Now you will see that there's new input, right? So what you have to do is to provide another surface to use as a map. In this case, we're just going to use a basic gradient. And when you connect it to the map values, you're going to see that you will get some very interesting result. In this case, be mapping value from 0 to 4. So the black color will correspond to the amount of 0 and the white color will correspond to the amount of 4. You can also of course change the minimum and maximum. And this is only one parameter, the amount parameter, right? Every time you see a value with this icon at the end, it means that you can use another surface to modify that values per pixel. And I think that this will allow you to create really interesting image, a really, really interesting effect beyond what you can normally do with just a single values. Another update, which actually quite old now, I'm not even sure if this introduced in 1.17 or 16, all of the color value now have opacity or the alpha channel support. So when you have the color values, you'll be able to click on it and you'll be able to change the alpha value directly. And as you can see, if you have new alpha bar show up when that value have opacity. It will also work with the palette and gradient as well. And as usual, there's a huge list of bug fixes in the last stable version. And there's also some optimization as well. And the rest would be a smaller update or smaller feature update to the already existed node. If you want to see the full list, the list will be in the description. There's also a section that contains just about the update introduced since the last release candidate. So since the RC3. But that will be all for today's video. So thank you everyone for watching and see you in the next one. Thank you.